think it is? You recognize it's toe? You recognize it's toe say? It has to be. Nothing else looks like it. It's the Yamato! Da da da! And we are back. All right. So we just completed last time uh, episode 11, or scenario rather, 11. So this time we're going to do is we're going to do 11. Rather than do episode scenario 12, and that should unlock two more DLC missions. We'll go through those. And then this determines which of a couple different scenario options we're going to get. In terms of new characters we can unlock and that sort of thing. So, let's, let's get started. We're going to rescue the, the Yamato. That concludes my report on atmospheric activity. Nice work as always, Captain. But I wasn't able to stop the Martian successors from revolting. I won't gloss things over. It's true. It's a shame that had to happen, but I think you did what you could. With the Earth Federation forces in disarray, we couldn't honestly have hoped to predict enemy movements well. What's, most what's more important right now is that we found people within the organization we can trust. That's a big step. Misumaru, you look like you're from a different show. I think it's both the points in the hairstyle and the eyebrows and the particular cut of your mustache. You mean the Brain Wave Express Corps? Yes, though it confirms what Kisukabi said, but there's a fair amount said among the Earth Federation's own ranks. They won't necessarily openly express their disagreement, but they'll quietly assess the situation they support part successors in the shadows. What's more, if fighting takes a turn in their favor, that's when they may well go into action and start defecting. A lot of these soldiers still carry traumas from past conflicts. Some are involved in plant fighting, others the lizard war, and others the rise of the A laws. I, um, I have to look, I'm going to have to look that up I know what show that's from. It's not just people in the military. Everyone is really on edge and distrustful of each other. Well, the fact that, you're, that history keeps getting edited and redacted in a very 1984-esque fashion is not helping. And the Martian successors protect themselves as the ones who will do away with such tension. That's definitely Kusakabe's style. He's always got to stir up the pot whoever he can. Side with the Martian successors and all your troubles, all your worries will disappear, so the record goes. But the world's not that simple, not by a long shot. Not everyone is so easily swayed, however. There are still people out there trying to go about their everyday business as normal. I think it'd be worth trying to reach out to such people so the Nindisco can be that much stronger. I said it when this problem was first founded, and I'll say it again. I'll let you handle it as you see fit. Contact anyone you think can help, even if, it, even if maybe they operate a little outside the law. Thank you, sir. Actually, before you go, there's one other thing I'd like to address as we continue on our mission. Is it about Akito? Yes. I know he has his own opinion on things, so I won't say anything just because I'm his father-in-law. Aha! Okay, so you are from Nantesco. But there is one thing I'd like you to tell him. What would that be? I'd love to have another bowl of his ramen someday. Understood. I'll make sure that gets to him. If I remember right from the movie, his sense of taste has been damaged. So, that may not be as comforting a sentiment as you'd like to think. Hmm. Uh. So you're going to take off. I guess there's no way I can make you stay? No, sadly. If the Yamato is really coming this way, I figure I'd better meet up with it. And if the Martian successors really have taken it, I want to help the Nodis go fight, the, to fight them to free it. Alright, I can tell you've made up your mind. 
Just try to stay in one piece, okay, Shitose? Yes, of course. Thanks for everything you've done for me. I'll never forget your kindness and generosity. And you're something special yourself, you know. Do me a favor, though, if it's not too much to ask. Give those guys raising hell for the greater good. The greater good. A real butt-kicking for me. When you find them, all right? We're missing a T in butt there. There's two, there, there's two T's in butt. But I... However, I think that's mainly caused by space on the screen in terms of characters. I'll cut them a little slack for that. You've got it. I think I'm going to stay behind. Toji, are you sure? It's not like reuniting with Yamato is going to get me any closer to going back home. And if I did get back, what's the point? We've lost so much time, it's probably pointless to even try to reach Iskandar now. But you'll never know unless you try. Sorry, this is where you, that's where you and I part ways. I plan on staying here and trying to make it in this world. I've already got a job lined up thanks to Isumi from this Fuji concern, so I'll be okay. I won't be starving or anything. So, if you're doing the other route with the male protagonist, does Shitose decide to stay behind? If you're sure... What, you think I can't handle myself? No, I don't, it's just... This is just a, such a big change. We've been fighting together this whole time. I really hope that part of your life is at least behind you for good. You deserve your peace. I'm sorry I keep bailing on you, Shitose. I'm just too tired to keep on going anymore. Poor Shoji. I feel so bad for him. Hey, are you going to be okay, Shitose? Yeah, I'll be fine. I, I promise. I need you to do me a favor, if it's not too much to ask. Could you let him keep staying with you? Yeah, sure. That's not a big deal at all. Thanks. Then I can more or less ready, rest easy knowing that. Well, I better get going now. Yeah, you be careful out there, Shitose. Soji, I promise you, I don't think you're a bad person for choosing to stay behind. I'm sure that if it was me in your shoes, I'd probably choose to do the exact same thing. That well, pretty much sets that up there. But I have to go. Nine spent too much time and energy tracking us down to let it go to waste. And I also want to make sure that this world doesn't end up in a bad place like ours if, if I can help it. It's good, to, it's good you want to bring more people to our side and all, but how are you actually going to do it, Ruri? We have a couple of options, but first, there's someone I want to try reaching out to first. That, that's a little redundant there. You can probably cut one of those first out of there. Oh, who are you thinking? Celestial being. What? Have you lost your mind? Celestial beings from Gundam. Like, Gundam... That's the group from Gundam 00. That our Gundam 00 protagonists are from. Did they just re- When they got ported into this universe, did they just set up, stop, and chop, and start everything all over again? Like, well, we got this Earth Federation, and we got these space noid groups starting crap. Let's start- Let's start from square one. You always- You just always have to dive right into the deep end. What's wrong with that? I think it's a good idea. I'm sorry, but what do you know? You've been in this world for all of two weeks. Well, two guys from Celestial Being ported over to our universe during the event, um, before we got bumped shut over to this universe, so we got to know them and know what the group's whole thing is. So, I think we can do pretty well. That's true. You're not wrong there, but that doesn't mean I'm not I'm totally ignorant about them. I mean, Celestial Beings that group that finally put a stop to the, a, those A-Laws guys, right? If anything, they sound like heroes, if you ask me. So clearly the characters of Gundam 00 did not, in fact, mention, oh, we're from this group called um, Celestial Being. Do you hear what you're saying, Shitose? This is getting out of hand again real fast. Shitose, 
if I may ask, would you mind telling me how you know about Celestial Being? I saw them in Celestial Being the movie. Why? Is the Gundam 00 movie a in-universe movie in the same way that Macross Do You Remember Love is a in-universe movie in the Macross universe? Why am I not surprised? Maybe nobody's told you this, kid, but, well, that movie is government propaganda made to sweep the A-Law's secret reputation in history under the rug. What? Really? You must be blind. It's pain as daylight to everyone. I'll take your word for it. To be honest, I haven't been able to see very many movies in my life. I would have thought at least with the, um, with what happened to Earth Civilization, at the very least, we would have the digital archives and movies and that sort of thing, and they still screened those. On the other hand, I think people like Maita running around, or I see people like Maita running around, so I thought guys like him were just normal to see here. Guess I was wrong. Maita was different. I mean that in a good way, but not everyone could be like him and his crew. Oh yeah, where, where is he, by the way? He said he had things to do with Brave Express course, and he'll be back, come back once they're done. See, Brave, Coma Brave Express... Um, which, which, which show is that again? Um... What is the name of his show? Give me a second. You're about to hear some keyboard strokes. For more about the other uh, adventures of the Brave Express 4, please, please tune to Brave Express Mike Gain, editor. Sorry, I'm sorry you guys. I thought it was smarter than that. It's okay, sis. It, 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 I'm sorry. It's okay, sis. Don't sweat it. Thanks, Nine. I'll try not to. I like to think Nine is still talking with the cadence, with like that GLaDOS cadence. If it helps, I can use my analytical capabilities as an AI to more than make up for your own lack of them. Oh, you just got dugged on! Thanks, Nine. You really know how to console a girl. If we could return to our previous discussion now. Seeing as neither Satose nor Nine are from here, I believe we critical we escalate you to on our celestial being and the history of this dimension. Would you like to know more? <laughs> Please turn to the wiki <laughs> in the game to get a quick refresher on what's going on in this universe. Yes, please, tell me everything you can. Celestial Being is a private armed organization that was founded centuries ago by a genius scientist who goes by the name of Aeolia Shinberg. Aeolia's intentions were straightforward, but grand. He sought the elimination of all war from the world. He has thought sought to end all war by force using Gundams, powerful mobile suits built on technology far beyond its time. That sounds like the movie. How is any of that bad? On paper, his methods might sound good, but in practice, the amount of holding the entire world at gunpoint. Whenever a conflict would be taking place, his people would swoop in as a neutral third party and end the fighting by beating both sides into submission. So, in other words, they're the shield. As in, not like the Marvel Universe shield, I mean like Sierra Hotel Lima um, India Echo Delta shield as in Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, and Dean Ambrose. Oh, that that's sure to make some enemies, I bet. At the time Celestial Being was founded, tensions ran between high between two groups, coordinators and naturals. Coordinators are people with enhanced DNA, while naturals retain their, their natural genes. A conflict between the two was in all likelihood inevitable. Now, you've met two coordinators already! The Gundam 00 characters who showed up on the Yamato were coordinators, at least one of them was. So this should be ringing a bell for you. Indeed, Celestial Being's automatic interventions diminished the strength of the Atlantic Federation, who was until then the Earth's strongest superpower. This created a void in power, which a group of coordinators called Zaft took advantage of to declare global war. Wait, or is this... Wait, no, is this, is this Seed? Is this Gundam Seed and not Gundam 00? Or are we mashing up Gundam 00 and Gundam Seed? My head hurts! 
Meanwhile, there was also the anti-Earth Jupiter Sphere alliance of Ganymede, Callisto, Europa, and other planetoid nations conspiring to attack Earth as well. This would be the bad guys from the original Nondisco. You probably know it better as the Jovian Federation. Oh, that was the Lizard War the last Nondisco was in. Th that's not what the Jovians prefer to call it, yes, but yes. We prefer to call it the War of Terran Aggression. Regardless, it plunged the world into a three-way war. It was an extremely chaotic period in our history. In the end, Celestial Being, along with Nandesco and some additional factions, brought the branding to an end, albeit the draws for all three sides involved. So nobody even won after all that fighting. Maybe it was really for the best for everyone involved. After the war ended, the nations of Earth all united under one banner and gave rise to the Earth Federation. Unfortunately, this was a front for the Alaws and ultimately, the Innovades that actually controlled them. The Innovades? I want to say I've heard that name in passing somewhere before. Hmm. Officially, their state purpose was to release a human existence, but in reality, they were, they were artificial people created by Aeolia to bring about innovation. Aeolia, that's the guy who you said made Celestial Being in the first place, isn't he? That's right, well, it's speculation. It seems that innovation meant to entail humanity being brought to the next was meant to entail humanity being brought to the next step in its overall evolution. And the ones who would lead the way? They are called Innovators. So that's why they're called the Innovates. Aha! The Innovator gets... Oh, so the Innovators are the double, seven double O characters who were brought to the Yamato. Anyway, amid all that fighting, such a big was nearly wiped out. It eventually made a comeback to put down a stop to the A-Laws, but then a new threat arrived. It was the Gaizok. The first alien life form mankind ever encountered, and with them came yet more fighting. Yeah, I've heard about the Geyser. I heard about them in some archival material before. To make matters worse, Zaf then attacked the Alos, who had previously oppressed the coordinators. And then the cycle started all over again, didn't it? That's right, once again, those through though, such a being was able to end the fighting with the help of some outside sympathizers and drive out the Geyser. At long last, we thought peace would return to the planet, but in reality, the Martian successors were preparing for their own uprising. So then, where's Celestial Being nowadays? Initially, they fought alongside the Earth Federation forces to put down the A-Laws, but after that fighting ended, it went off somewhere and simply vanished. This will all be on the test. Those guys rub me the wrong way. They always have, really, ever since the Lizard War. Be that as it may, I don't think their actions to me they've abandoned their founding principles. They may well view themselves as a sort of catalyst, a harbinger that brought war and chaos to the world despite their best intentions, a heavy sin to bear. But they didn't mean to, they fought to end war. They did, yes, which is why the propaganda movie you saw went so far out of its way to put Celestial Being and the front and center of the story. Ultimately, however, it's only it's up to only the members of Celestial Being to decide how they view themselves. Yeah, I can get where they're coming from, too. You can bet they probably won't be able to keep their noses out of the Martian successes forever. Okay, so how do you plan to actually contact them? For starters, it's safe to assume the Martian successors have been able to keep a close eye on everything we've been up to. I would agree with that assessment. They then use that knowledge to hire terrorists and distract us. They haven't exactly forgotten the fact that they lost to us during the Lizard War. Indeed. Viewed from that lens, we can guess they're pl likely planning to assault the Nandisco. And when they come out swinging, so will Celestial Being. So let me get this straight. You want to use the, Mar the Nandisco to draw out the Martian successors, which will then bring Celestial Being right over to us. We hope. <clears throat> yes, I know it's a significant gamble considering that what will happen if Celestial Being doesn't show up, but in the end, we I think it's when we can safely make. But if what I saw in that movie was made up, that means that the real Gundam plants and pods are probably way different from what I imagined. I wonder how the guy of the blue one is, especially. Yes, yes, purloined everything in sight of my kittens, leaving their precious stone unturned. If you can see it, it's up for grabs and all mine! Vuitton, really? Really? <clears throat> yes, Lazy Catherine, right away! Oh, I want a, oh, I love a jewel, I hope. Good jewel heist. The world is about truly my oyster. And what do you know? Oysters make pearls, which should all belong to me, too! Lady Catherine, you need to be careful. Somebody's coming right this way! 
What? The sole areas would be sealed up tighter than cat's claws and a scratchy clothes. I thought my cat girls were better lookouts. Perhaps the cops here are more clever than I thought. Uh, actually, my lady, it's... I'm Batman. Hold it right there, pink cat. Well, 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 look what the cat's dragged in. Get it, pink cat, or should I call you... Catherine, Catherine Vuitton, the shit... Get it, pink cat, or should I call you Catherine Vuitton, the shapeless cat murder burglar? We, the Brave Express Corps, have come on behalf of the police to arrest you and your nefarious kittens. Ugh, you're always such a nuisance. Leave me alone. If you think you can stop me on my path to becoming the richest billionaire there, boy, let me tell you, you've got another thing coming. You know, an even bigger number than a million is a bill. Who cares about your dumb math? All I want is to be rich. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt the gathering, but our, our jewel acquisition team was just captured by the Brave Express Corps' giant robots. What? You've got to be kidding me! Oh, oh, ow, oh, 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 ooh, that hurts. I suppose that leaves me with no other choice. Oh, no you don't, big cat. You'll never get away from me this time, you feisty feline. <laughs> or should I say... <laughs> What's going on? What are you doing? If you thought my kittens and I were just pretty quick, you could whisper off the to think again, boy. Audrey, is everything set? Yes, my lady. We're ready to strike on your command. Holy cow! That's one heck of an explosion! Holy nature glycerin, Batman! Oh, how quickly the tables have turned, haven't they? It's the dawn of a new day! A day where I'll crush you! Oh, I love playing, I love Super Robot Villains. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.